Hi, I'm Leah. I'm the project coordinator for the Drug Free Communities Grant for the Town of North Reading, and I'm here to welcome you guys to the CIT Community Impact Team um, television program. And I have a special guest here with me today. It's Dr. Richard Falzone. Hi. Um, and we're going to talk about substance use and treatment options. So welcome, Dr. Falzone. So would you like to tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. I am an adolescent and adult psychiatrist, and I specialize in addiction medicine. Okay, great. All right. Um, so for the first question, I kind of just wanted to ask you, what are some of the warning signs of substance use? That's a good question. Um, it can be pretty varied, mm -hmm. but it usually shows up as a change in behavior, a change in mood, uh, a change in appearance sometimes mm -hmm. of one's kids. And it can be a little difficult to tease out because, as we know, adolescence is a time of major change. Mm -hmm. And uh, you get rebellious attitudes and kids trying on different styles and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it can be a little hard to tell what's normal and, okay. and what's problematic. Mm -hmm. But I would say if your kids' grades start to fall off, mm -hmm. if they start to seriously lose interest in things that they used to enjoy doing, okay. um, that that would be something to get your attention. Many parents find that the, they actually catch their kid. Mm -hmm. The kid comes okay. home uh, intoxicated, mm -hmm. um, or they find some evidence that the kid has been using. Another uh, big tell is a change in the kid's peer group. So okay. if you see that mm -hmm. your child is starting to hang out with uh, different kids, and they don't want you to meet them, mm -hmm. whereas previously sure. you knew all their friends mm -hmm. and you might even you know, be friends with those kids' parents, right. uh, that, that can start to change. So that would be a red flag. Okay, gotcha. All right. Um, and in your experience, how does substance use begin, which I know you had just mentioned um, a couple things, and would you say there's a typical age of onset for substance use? It varies widely. Okay. And it's probably obvious that the earlier the onset, the worse the problems tend to be. Okay. So a kid who starts smoking pot in sixth or seventh grade mm -hmm. is likely to be in worse trouble uh, by the time they get to high school than a kid wow. that doesn't discover it until 10th or 11th grade. Mm -hmm. But that's not a hard and fast rule. Mm -hmm. And I have had uh, a number of kids who started smoking in say 10th or 11th grade and okay. progressed very quickly wow. to problematic use of hard drugs. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's kids that started smoking in 8th or 9th grade and it never progressed to what you'd call like really problematic use. Mm -hmm. um, and that probably bears some, some further discussion. Uh, when I say problematic use, use versus non-problematic use, mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting that any parent should condone any substance use. Sure. Right, mm -hmm. um, but but there is a huge range. The kids that that come to my attention are usually mm -hmm. the ones that are starting to have some impact from okay. their use, mm -hmm. um, either in family relationships or their grades or their mood. And we can talk more about that a little bit later. Okay. Is the relationship between emotional function and mm -hmm. mood and substance use? Um, but the kids who have non-problematic use tend not to come to clinical attention. They just, okay. they never make it on the radar. I see, gotcha. Okay, um, and so what concerns you most about substance use and factors that may lead to substance use, such as maybe stress, untreated mental illness, or ease of access? Yeah, all of the above. And there's a big correlation between um, stress and the use of substances, right? That is actually what I think the biggest problem is, is during the teenage years, mm -hmm. kids have to sort out so much. And I mm -hmm. think every generation thinks that the new generation is going to hell in a handbasket. Uh -huh. um, but these days, it really is a lot more complex than it was when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. when the internet hadn't become a thing yet. Sure. And I don't even think cell phones were out. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dating myself. Um, but kids have to deal with an awful lot of stress, mm -hmm. all the normal stresses that right. every generation of teenagers has had to go through, plus the wild, wild west of social media. Yes. Yep. Um, and that's just a lot to deal with. And so we see problematic use of substances mm -hmm. and the internet itself and mm -hmm. cell phones as a way of managing emotions and managing mm -hmm. um, uh, anxieties. Mm -hmm. And that's really problematic. So at a time when kids are supposed to be 
learning how to deal with feelings and relationships. Uh, they're turning to these distractions, mm -hmm. and I think that there are uh, many kids, not all, of sure. course, mm -hmm. but many kids uh, fall by the wayside, mm -hmm. and, and they use uh, the Internet, gaming, uh, social media, pornography, as ways of kind of numbing themselves mm -hmm. out so that they don't have to deal with those feelings. Okay. That's tough. It is. Yeah. It's very complicated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how detailed we want to get, but I could go over some kind of uh, like not uh, identified cases, mm -hmm. but kind of typical uh, presentations for things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it can be very challenging. Parent education is super important because okay. as a parent, you don't want to you don't want to overreact, but you don't want to underreact. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself. That's OK. That's yeah. OK. What trends are you seeing, if any, regarding substance use? And specifically, have you seen fentanyl use on the rise at all? Yeah, I do a lot of um, uh, heroin and opiate recovery treatment, mm -hmm. and I have had some cases of people using using fentanyl, okay. and it is scary. Mm -hmm. And just about every one of my patients that's in treatment for opioid use mm -hmm. disorder knows somebody who has died. Wow. It's just, mm -hmm. it really is a, an epidemic. Mm -hmm. um, and with the onset of fentanyl, it's, I mean, the Russian roulette, it just got a whole lot worse. Sure. It's it, now Russian roulette with only three chambers in the gun or whatever. Uh -huh. It's very scary. Yeah. Um, aside from that, that's probably the scariest thing. Okay. But in terms of maybe, you know, tr as troubling in a different way is this uh, huge mainstreaming of cannabis among mm -hmm. kids mm -hmm. and parents. Um, there almost seems to be a, a feeling of uh, inevitability mm -hmm. that um, you're not going to be able to keep kids from doing it, so why even discourage it? Okay. Um, and that, that is problematic, mm -hmm. and I think we're going to see uh, a swing back the other way. I think that, I hope that this generation of kids is going to realize mm -hmm. at some point how much that cost them, and they're going to be a little bit more diligent, at least in educating their kids mm -hmm. um, and keeping an eye so that it doesn't, um, uh, so that they don't waste as much time in sure. that. I feel like I'm blaming parents here a little bit, and that's that's not the case at mm -hmm. all. Um, I sympathize with parents, and, sure. I, and I actually do a whole lot of parent guidance for what to uh, what to watch out for and mm -hmm. kind of what what stance to take. Okay. Can I put in a plug for a book? Sure. I meant to bring a copy of it with me. Write this down. It's called <laughs> Beyond Addiction. Um, Beyond Addiction, the main author is Foot, F-O-O-T-E. And that is a book published by the Center for Motivation and Change, which is based in New York. And it is the, the latest state-of-the-art, scientifically based, uh, evidence-based um, advice on what works and what doesn't work in uh, recovery um, from substance use. Uh, and what I like about it so much is it really speaks to the parents. It's all about maintaining your own balance and sanity mm -hmm. when a loved one is struggling. So how to take care of yourself and help your uh, you know, nudge your, your loved one back in the direction of getting better. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a great resource. Thank you for sharing it's, it. It's that. fantastic. Yeah. Yep. What treatment options are available to people looking for help? So if you have come across people who are really kind of in need of help, what would you suggest to them? Uh, the evidence shows that you want to start with the, the least restrictive alternative first. Okay. So the idea of coming down super hard to stamp out any problems, you know, before they get bigger, mm -hmm. uh, tends to backfire. Okay. Um, so if a parent caught their kids smoking a joint or drinking a beer, that's not a time to try to hospitalize them or send mm -hmm. them off to a wilderness program. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want, I can talk more about wilderness programs later. Okay. They're fantastic. Okay. But it's kind of a, it's a proportional response. So, mm -hmm. um, so the first uh, intervention might be no professional intervention, but just a conversation with your kid. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is what uh, we found. This is concerning. Mm -hmm. um, trying to not go at them with a whole lot of anger and, and, and shame, but, but concern. Of course. Um, if it looks like there is more of a problem, and a lot of parents will say, you know, the first call I'll get will be, my kid has uh, 
is depressed mm -hmm. and he's self-medicating and we know he's been smoking pot for some time. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say as soon as you see that your kid is depressed um, and certainly as soon as you notice that your kid is smoking weed, mm -hmm. that's a time to, to take action. Okay. Um, you could start by asking the pediatrician mm -hmm. um, who might refer uh, to a therapist or a counselor or they themselves just talk to the kid about, mm -hmm. hey, what's going on? Um, sometimes uh, it turns out that it was, you know, non-problematic use. It was just a couple of times, but the kid has got everything um, doing well in all mm -hmm. other areas. Mm -hmm. um, if there is more of a problem, though, then it might warrant a uh, meeting with a therapist okay. or a counselor. If there's evidence that there's a significant uh, mental health issue mm -hmm. like depression or anxiety mm -hmm. or something more serious um, like bipolar disorder mm -hmm. or psychotic disorder, then you do want to, I think, have a psychiatrist evaluate the child Okay. because um, that could require uh, medication treatment sure. uh, in addition to therapy. Okay. Um, beyond, and so everything I've talked about so far would be outpatient mm -hmm. level of care, just going office visits. Okay. If a kid has really gone off the rails, they're not mm -hmm. going to school, they're super depressed, they're making, you know, kind of suicidal statements mm -hmm. or just really behaving in an odd way, mm -hmm. um, that, that warrants evaluation for a higher level of care, okay. which could be a brief residential treatment. Mm -hmm. Um, or even a psychiatric hospitalization. Um, right. That can be life-saving. Mm -hmm. It's not very therapeutic, mm -hmm. although sometimes just that intervention can be a little bit of a wake-up call for mm -hmm. the kid and get them engaged in, in outpatient treatment. Okay. Um, for a kid whose problem is more entrenched, uh, they've been smoking weed for a long time, um, kind of estranged from their families, there's a climate of hostility in the house, um, doesn't care about school, skips school, um, is high all the time, mm -hmm. uh, is selling weed, mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing. Uh, wilderness programs can be fantastic for mm -hmm. families that can afford it because sure. unfortunately they're very expensive. Okay. Mm -hmm. But those programs provide a lengthy time out. Mm -hmm. Often, you know, a few days in a hospital or a week in a residential program, if that's enough, great. But sometimes that's not a big enough dose mm -hmm. uh, or a big enough time out from mm -hmm. all the distractions and stresses. Yeah. The um, analogy I use is if you've got a sick fish in a polluted aquarium mm -hmm. and you take them out and you put them in fresh water, mm -hmm. they'll perk up. Sure. But if you put them right back in the polluted aquarium, they're going to get sick again pretty mm -hmm. quickly. Makes sense. And so wilderness programs are really designed to help kids gain in a kind of maturity, character development, mm -hmm. as well as getting very, very healthy. And a lot of the kids I see have not been healthy in a long time. Okay. They've been neglecting themselves. They don't exercise at all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they can actually have like postural problems because they spend all their time sitting around mm -hmm. playing video games, watching screens, things like mm -hmm. that. Okay. So there's a whole there's a whole range there of is. options. Yeah. Well thank you for going over all of them. There are quite a few. No, so. happy to. Um, how can a concerned family member get help for a loved one? And then aside from that, what would so I guess it's a two part question. If there is an individual who's looking for help, what would be the first step? And then if there's a family member who maybe is concerned about that individual, what would they do? Well, if it's the kid, mm -hmm. that that would be great. If a kid actually has the insight to know that that they're in trouble, mm -hmm. uh, that they're depressed, or they're starting to go down a road that they know is not good, talk to a teacher, talk to a guidance mm -hmm. counselor, a coach, their parents. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, and hopefully, parents. Everybody should read Beyond Addiction. That should actually be. Um, uh, required reading mm -hmm. for anybody who has kids. Um, uh, even outside of substance use issues, the, uh, it, it teaches uh, a very positive uh, stance to take okay. with your kid. Because mm -hmm. the language and the tone uh, that you use makes all the difference mm -hmm. in whether or not your communication with your kid is effective. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, if, the, um, if the kid wants to get help, Talk to a trusted adult, ideally your parent. Mm -hmm. Hopefully your parent is, is making the environment conducive to you being able to talk to them. Sure. For a parent that's concerned, there are a range of options from self-help groups. If, mm -hmm. So I guess I, 
starting with kind of the extreme, um, there's a group called Learn to Cope, okay. which is a wonderful organization. Mm -hmm. Learn, the number two, cope.org, mm -hmm. I believe. And they have, it's really grown, and they have meetings uh, in various towns mm -hmm. uh, around the area. And that's for parents of kids who have pretty serious substance use okay. issues, you know, mm -hmm. like opiates, hard drugs, sure. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody whose kid has smoked a pot a couple of times, that would probably feel like overkill. Okay. Um, for those parents, you know, you've got a high schooler or a middle schooler who's uh, getting into trouble, mm -hmm. uh, they might contact um, one of the, the teaching hospitals. Uh, Mass General and Children's both have excellent uh, evaluation mm -hmm. um, and treatment programs at a children's hospital, it's called the ASAP program, okay. I believe Adolescent Substance Abuse Program. And at MGH, it's the ARMS program, mm -hmm. the um, Addiction ARMS, and I'm blanking on That's what okay. that stands mm -hmm. for right now. But the MGH ARMS program, and both of them um, offer uh, similar, uh, you know, expert level mm -hmm. evaluation and ongoing treatment when okay. needed. Yeah. Great. All right. Recovery management okay. <laughs> services. Adolescent recovery management services. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I also just wanted to remind everyone, too, that the community impact team is a great area that you can get resources and reach out for help if you do need anything. And our focus is preventing youth substance use. And I have um, the contact information, which the number for youth services is 978-357-5281. So that's 978 Three five seven five two eight one, or you can reach out um, via email at coalition at northreadingma.gov. So that's coalition at northreadingma.gov. Um, and I just wanted to check in. Was there anything else you wanted to cover or go over? Or is that no? Sound? I appreciate you having this conversation. I think that this is useful to get the word out there because there's mm -hmm. a lot that's parents can feel very alone mm -hmm. uh, in this. Even getting together with your neighbors, with other parents, can be hugely uh, supportive. Sure. Because um, you got to take care of yourself. You know, put your oxygen mask on first. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Felzone, and thanks for coming in and coming on our show today. I appreciate it's it. It's been a pleasure. Take care. Thanks. Bye.